Welcome to Culture Talk. This is the segment where we talk about the intersection of science, faith, and pop culture, and how culturally relevant topics can help us start conversations about our faith. I'm joined today with Dr. Gavin Ortland. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. You are a pastor and a theologian, and you also enjoy movies. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah, very much. Yeah. And we're, today we're going to be talking about movies and why we love stories to have happy endings. Why? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a funny thing, but um, whenever a movie doesn't have a happy ending, mm -hmm. I think we feel that. Yeah. Sometimes you feel like almost cheated, like mm -hmm. it should have a happy ending. And we were talking the other day about um, the quote in The Lord of the Rings where Sam says, is everything sad going to come mm -hmm. untrue? Mm -hmm. And how we get uh, emotional yeah. thinking about that quote. Yeah. And it's an interesting question of, you know, we tend to kind of take that for granted when you're watching a movie. Well, right. of course the good guys are gonna win at the end. But it's an interesting question of why is that desire there? Yeah. Why do we tell that same story over and mm -hmm. over of good fighting evil and good winning in the end? Yeah. Well. Why do we tell those stories, and like what what is the drive behind that? Well, I like to think of it from two two different possible standpoints, mm -hmm. and these are not um, exhaustive. There mm -hmm. could be others in addition to these two, but one of them would be kind of a naturalistic evolutionary mm -hmm. perspective. So yeah. naturalism just being there's nothing beyond nature, right. there's no God, and evolution is kind of the sum total explanation of how we got here mm -hmm. and you know, why we love good versus evil, good defeating evil. Right. And uh, the, the claim would be that that's all a function of our evolutionary past, that something mm -hmm. about that framework and about our sense of right and wrong helped our ancestors survive. Right. And so, uh, you know, um, skeptics talk about this as an illusion. Michael Ruse has a great quote where he's basically saying, our sense of morality, mm -hmm. good and evil, is an illusion that's been fobbed off on us by our genes to get us to cooperate. So there's really nothing, there's no ultimate wow. right and wrong out there. Yeah. It's, an, it's basically an illusion that has helped ancestors, our ancestors survive. So from a naturalistic perspective, when we think of good and evil or morality, that that's just a ruse, that's just to get us to behave? That would be a naturalistic um, understanding of how morality comes to be? That's right, yeah, okay. yeah. And I find that, you know, um, I don't want to dismiss that too quickly. Right, There's right. a lot of smart people who think that way, but both intellectually and then emotionally, that right. is such an unsatisfying uh, way to, I think, live your life and mm -hmm. base, you know, being a theist, to look on the other side mm -hmm. of it, it allows you to live more comfortably within your own humanity mm -hmm. because you don't have to question these deep instincts that we call a conscience, yeah. the right and wrong, that they really are telling us something true. Mm -hmm. So from a naturalistic perspective, the conscience, there's, it just evolved and it's to help us behave or to like be in order and have a, a, a civilized society. Um, I'm guessing that's what you're, you're saying is that's where morality would come from. From mm -hmm. a Christian perspective, where do we say morality comes from? Okay, so from a Christian perspective, mm -hmm. you can look at that longing for good to defeat evil mm -hmm. and the sense that good and evil are real, um, significant, um, even transcendent categories. Mm -hmm. You can look at that as not an illusion, but a little clue mm -hmm. to what ultimate reality is like yeah. because we believe God himself is that standard of good. Right. And we believe that one day there will be a happy ending. Mm -hmm. And our love for happy endings is a little clue of what's going to happen one day. That desire deep within us is not uh, a distraction from the truth. It's a clue about the truth. And I find right. that both more plausible and just more beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, to think that um, uh, there really will one day be a reckoning and um, justice will occur and good will forever triumph over evil. Um, that's a worldview you can really live off of. Right. It's hard to live off of this idea that, yeah, good and evil, that's it's ultimately an illusion. An illusion. Yeah. yeah, It's hard to base your life upon that. Well, from a, a skeptic's perspective, we un well, we understand as Christians where morality comes from, and um, we understand the, the narrative of good ultimately defeating evil. But a skeptic w would challenge that and say, how can morality come from Christianity when, or from religion in general when religion has done so much bad? How can we respond to that? Yeah, that's a good 
uh, concern, and that's mm -hmm. the, probably the most frequent response yeah. that you hear. And I would say two things about it. One is that it actually doesn't address the moral argument, that's mm -hmm. what we're getting into here, that the objectivity of moral values and duties is best explained by theism, not mm -hmm. by naturalism. It actually doesn't respond to that argument to point out bad things that religious people have done because that's more of a historical question. Yeah. What we're after is um, where does morality itself come mm -hmm. from? And uh, so I want to point out that, but then we also want to meet the person where they're at. Yeah. And I like to just move in and, and acknowledge that they have a point. Yeah. There is a lot of terrible things that have happened in the name of religion and in church history specifically. Right. Uh, as a Christian, that doesn't actually bother me to the point of questioning Christianity. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's it's sad to mm -hmm. consider, but um, what I believe the gospel is is not you know good news that the church is here to save mm -hmm. us. Um, Martin Luther said uh, the church is not a museum for saints; it's a hospital for sinners. Yeah. And we believe Jesus came and and said, "I did not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners." And He's our hope. So when I see um, evil things that have occurred in the name of Christianity, um, it doesn't make me question Christ, um, because I believe all people are, are flawed. Mm. And even my non-Christian friends, I have enormous respect for. They have a conscience, they're made in God's image, and they're going to get it right in ways that I won't sometimes. Right. So you want to approach the conversation with humility, but then always kicking it back to Jesus and right. saying, He is the one on whom Christianity stands or falls. Right. And especially in times of church history where the state and the religion get bundled up together, mm -hmm. a lot of things are going to occur in the name of the religion that don't actually reflect who Jesus is. Right. I think that's such a wonderful reminder, even for Christians who are struggling with the people in the church versus Jesus. Yeah. And the, the distinction between Christians and Christ yeah. that... Our hope is in Christ. It's not in the people who claim Christ. You know, we, we do want to be in a good community, but our hope should be in Christ. Right, exactly. Yeah. And that's yeah. just a closing thought I could have because, mm -hmm. you know, we both know people who have, because of their hurts from Christian community, yeah. withdrawn from Christianity yeah. or struggled to engage. They're not sure where they're at in their faith. They're maybe disillusioned. Yeah. And I want to put my arm around their shoulder yeah and say, you know, those hurts are real, mm -hmm. and it really is easy to get disillusioned, but the best friend you will have in that place is Jesus. Yeah. Don't run from Him. Yeah. You know, He's the answer to that. He's going to be the gentlest person to, to care for you when you're in that place. Yeah. And so that's where I want to encourage people yeah. when they've been disillusioned by the church. Yeah, that's your pastor's heart for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, thanks. I hope to encourage you if you're watching, if you've been disillusioned or hurt, by the church, get closer to Jesus. And I just really pray that um, you'll be encouraged by the words here from Dr. Gavin Ortland. And speaking of, if you want to hear more from him, visit reasons.org and search for Gavin Ortland.